Hello, hello. Would like to talk about the corporate shame mechanism. Okay. So I see it on the internet all the time. I see people have been sucked into the shame mechanism because what the corporations are doing, and I've talked about this many times before, but I guess the more videos I make about this, the more the videos will be somehow circulating, and the more chances there are that maybe a handful of people will come across those videos and maybe listen to it. Maybe listen, if you can listen to it for three minutes at least, that would be really, really helpful for your own life and for life in general, all life, not just human life. Okay. So, <coughs> most humans, and that Jiddu Krishnamurti talks about this in his conversations with Dr. David Bohm and other people, and also in his lectures and presentations in Ojai and Brockwood Park, England. He has written a book about pedagogic, and it is an excellent book. It's a it's a perfect handbook. It's a perfect pocket book to have with you at all times. And when you have a, a few moments to read, I recommend read in this book because and read it over and over and over again because. You might be missing some of the points when you first read it. So I read it very slowly and carefully, and I read several sentences again and again, because it is absolutely critical what he's writing. Most humans, this is the truth, most humans, and this has been going on for thousands and, and maybe hundreds of thousands of years, and maybe longer, maybe for millions of years so maybe ever since humans have been pri the first primates this has been going on and i see it among chimpanzees as well and and dr robert sapolsky has observed it in baboons but it is in the animal world it's not as widespread as it is among humans, the human species. The human species is, if some people call it a mistake, you know, some people call it an error, some people call it um, <coughs> a deviation from the regular evolutionary path. And the reason why, and Stephen Hawking said that humans don't deserve to be here because they, they destroy everything, you know. Ev everyone and every being who does not want things to be destroyed is going to be pulled into that same cesspool, you know. and. Hopefully, some kind-hearted beings will be immune to the cesspool, immune to the to the infections, immune to the immunized bacteria and viruses that have been have been bred, you know, sometimes deliberately, sometimes you know unintentionally escaped unintentionally has become resistant because of doctors prescribing antibiotics when they are dealing with a virus and antibiotics don't work for a virus but they prescribe it anyway because they make money on it they get some kickback some kind of percentage on it this is just one out of 
millions of examples, I mean, the list just keeps going on. People use pesticides because Monsanto makes money on the pesticides that are being distributed. And this is being distributed all the way through the entire government. I'm mean, like, from the all the way from Washington into rural small communities. And I've seen it, I talked about this before. And not all organizations who are trying to help are actually really on the level with that. So there are there there's always some kind of tweaky, sneaky little twist happening, you know, sometimes even in in initially helpful organizations even because greed incentives are are often more powerful than anything else. This we need to reverse and it is possible to reverse it. And <coughs> so greed greed and shame and the need for power and the the ego bloated and all of this this all ties in with one another. Most people, and that's what Jiddu Krishnamurti said in his speeches, lectures, and other presentations and conversations, most people had been shamed. Okay, This is very important. And um, I don't like Rodney Smith so much, the, the, the guru, self-declared guru in Washington. Buddhist uh, scholar, but he uh, holds the other cheek and is, f is not much difference to the fundamentalist Christians. And he's even sided with the fundamentalist Christians and, and uh, draw the, drew them into his uh, w battered women shelter type of situation that he has. He probably doesn't even allow animals in the shelter. So I don't like I don't like Rodney Smith at all. You know, I have a real problem with this guy. He doesn't have a clue what the Buddha is talking about. But there's one thing that he has learned and I, I believe that he has understood. And that is that we that the word shame on you is something that needs to be erased from our vocabulary. It needs to be put into a recycle bin on your computer and it needs to be crushed okay, and completely recycled and then the digits that come out of this word will be used for something more useful like self-empowerment. You know. So we don't need the, the wording shame on you anymore. We don't need the words shame unless we talk about the word, unless we talk about the phenomenon, psychological phenomenon, shame and shaming. And, and there is a whole science behind it. And that is also one of the, one of the main things that, that has been my lifetime's subject interest. Ever since I was 20, I have been really interested in what makes people do cruel things and thoughtless and violent and insensitive things to other living beings, animals and other humans and children. So where does this cycle come from? Where did it start? How do people propagate it? How is this perpetuated by most people? And this is something, this is very important for us to look into. Very, very, very important. Every single individual out there has the responsibility to look into what makes you Every individual, if I mean, I'm not talking to the kind-hearted people. Pe the kind-hearted people are fa falling out of this. It's only two percent of kind-hearted people who do not. They do not cater 
to this destruction cycle from from the corporations, commerce, and um, you know the buckling and treading. You know, bicycle riding they call it, mental bicycle riding. You know, buckling to the top. You know, like like rolling people the red carpet out when they think they are a boss, and treading down to those who they think are weak or or soft or they don't defend themselves. Mm. So this is the this is the audience I'm talking to. Hopefully somebody will listen to me, you know, and instead of taking offense, instead of, you know, seeing this as an affront against your person personality, use this right now just for once one time just this time use this to to your benefit use this take advantage of this information because if you do later on you will not regret that you did okay. this is very important think about this get into this study this this is your chance okay if you want you live here as a student. You know. We all are students of life. You know. Student of life, Richard S. You know. I think that's a great, great username. The best username you ever came up with. You know. And uh, I like the potato guy too. So that's a kind of like a cute image. And um, it's a step in the right direction. It's a step in the direction to say, "Ha, ah, wait a minute, I have been puffed up quite a bit uh, let me let me let the air out let me let me <sighs> vent that air out of that puffed up ego and come back down to to ground zero you know and and take a really good look at what's going on yeah. what is going on I have been talking to a lot of people lately and there have been an awful lot of feisty, aggressive, warmongering people. Some of them think that they're fighting a good fight. Let me tell you something. If you are a warmonger, if you let your ego take over to the point where you will just lash out against anyone and anything, you are not fighting the good fight, okay? This is, f this is a fact. We shouldn't even use this terminology, fight the good fight. Yeah. I'm an activist, I do what I can. I, I really try to do what I can. I be try to become inventive with this. I try to recycle my own issues all the time. I work on it all the time. I try to communicate with people. I've tried different things. I try to be super nice. That doesn't seem to work. Uh, I have been aggressive. That certainly doesn't work. People were shocked. That was in the very beginning when I first started on YouTube about eight years ago. I, I hate those people who hunt and but the problem is I'm not going to help anyone if I <coughs> start to go to war with them you know verbally or physically or in any form this is definitely not the solution so for anyone who is against government or something you know it's i always see this government you know they walk on us like a rug you know who's the government the government consists of people like you and me okay They're, they just happen to work for the government so this does the government consists of average people usually very average people you know the only difference is that most of the people who got into higher ranks, they, they have been a, a, a notch more ambitious than you and myself. You know. And they have been a notch more diplomatic and more, and, and more willing to compromise 
Yeah. So most of them are not caring. Yeah. Yeah, we all know this. That doesn't mean we have to throw all of them out with the bathtub. Yeah. There are some who are caring, but how do we how do we discern who is caring and who is not, you know? How do you discern who's caring and who's not by listening to the corporate propaganda? That certainly is not going to give you the full picture, or is it? So I want you to think about this. Every, almost every child has been shamed by their caregivers, whether it's the parents or grandparents or a nanny or whoever, or, or it could be teachers in schools, it could be classmates and, and friends and so on, uh, uncles, aunts, psychotic evil aunts, and who knows, you know. People, most people have been abused, actually, but almost all people have been shamed psychologically in some form or another, whether, whether it was through rape, through sexual abuse, through the adult having sick needs for a child, or demands, or neurotic, egoic standards set on the children, and when the children couldn't fulfill it, they get mad and they started shaming. I've had that happen in my life, but I have not let let that run my life. I have inspected it, I have looked at it full force into its face, and I have confronted myself with that. And I encourage all people to do the same. Confront yourself with those things and say no to that shame that you carry inside of yourself and say yes to yourself, you, you know, you who have abused people verbally. Come back down to ground zero and start to inspect yourself and start to evaluate things. Who are you really? Your inner child is not the one who abuses any random or kind-hearted person you come across. The inner child will say thank you for being honest. Thank you for letting me look at things from a different perspective. It's the ego who lashes out and uses the F word and condemns people, you know, for trying to be nice. You know, sometimes people, they can say whatever, they, I can say whatever I want to a hater. It will always be misconstructed as an affront against you, as an attack against your person. I don't even know you at all. I don't see a photo. I don't see a video of you. You hide perfectly well behind a sneaky trollish little video channel, you know. And you and your ego does all this. Your ego is not upright looking someone straight in the face. Your ego is the drive-by commenter. The coward, the coward jerk you know, who who has to insult and lash out and then quickly run off so nobody can even say anything back you know nobody can even straighten things out and you won't listen no matter what someone says to you. come back to ground zero and evaluate who you really are what do you want is it your ego who wants to dismantle the government? Okay. Again, who's the government? People like you and myself. Okay. Who just happened to not drink or, and I don't drink and I don't do any of these things. I'm really doing a, a straight path. Okay. But I'm not a, a diplomatic, I'm not that diplomatic. You know, I, I, I don't think I'm cut out to become a politician. I would like to be, but I don't think I stand a chance. It takes an awful lot of skill to become a politician. You have to, it is a very narrow path, a windy narrow path to become a politician, a good politician. In part if you are a corrupt politician, you have it easy. You get it made. Yeah. 
you get it paid and made and you get the red rug rolled out to you all the way up the staircase but if you are kind and caring and you want to make a difference you're not going to you're going to be blocked by most people because most people have their foot in the corporations <coughs> and that's the truth there's only a handful of people who do not and those people there i really admire those people because because they have really put their mind into how do I walk this narrow path up so that I can as an activist make a difference for the world so that I can make the world a better place yeah. but the corporations know how to twist that around and how to make someone who's kind and caring if they wear the wrong shoe color make them a criminal because of this she wore the wrong shoe color and now this is going to be held against her publicly by the media and and all the people go <gasps> she wore the wrong shoe color that t terrible criminal that murderer oh my gosh you know and this is what i see and that's why i make videos because i'm trying to make you look look at it look at it right now hello what are you doing you believe the corporate sneaky slander campaigns that have nothing to say they don't even have anything really in their hand against anyone they make it up as they go they make up bullshit and come up with the most ridiculous things. Somebody used their own email server? Wow! And then the public goes, oh! Or they, 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 they sick that Monica Lewinsky on Bill Clinton. Yeah, she did some blow jobs because Bill Clinton, hello, he's a living being too, you know, alive. It's not a robot. It's made out of flesh. Okay. Has needs. Yes. Okay. So that had nothing to do with his marriage. And it also had nothing to do with the public. It's not none of the public's business. Okay. It's none of your business who he has blowjobs with. Okay. Just want to remind you, you know, you don't want your blowjobs to become public either. Huh? Do you? Jeb Bush? Do you? J I mean, just wondering. So, okay. Come down to ground zero psychologically within yourself and evaluate what's going on. Has your ego taken it a step too far? No. Come down, dissolve that ego. It can happen in an instant. Dissolve the ego and say, no more. I am not willing to contribute to the world being damaged and destroyed anymore. Not with me anymore. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be doing the honest route. I'm going to inspect myself. I want to heal myself. I want to experience true love. I want to experience true sex not the kinky shit not the one that's built on egoic neurotic needs that have been convoluted and convoluted and built upon and built upon more and more armored structures defense mechanisms uh, kinky fears and and uh, being shamed and then needing it in some way and needing this dismantle that deconstruct that old structure come back to ground zero come back to your inner child to the to the sapling that's still alive inside of the entire tree trunk come back to that sapling and re and reform reform the entire tree into health get the toxins out of it not with glyphosate, not with toxins, but with good thoughts, with honesty, with introspection, with the willingness to move forward, to heal yourself and, and be part of healing the entire 
planet, the entire universe, the, the realm that we live, all live in, all animals, all dogs, horses and humans and all other beings. Take care.